Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming this morning. Uh, we have an interesting roundtable lineup this morning to discuss a, a very unique project. Um, one some of you have heard about before and some of you will be shocked to learn about. Uh, before we get started, I'll introduce the roundtable panel and go through the names and faces here. Are we all here? Yeah. Very good. Okay. Uh, I have uh, César Giron, he's the president of Maison Mom. Uh, he's over here on the second from the right. I have uh, Laurent Frenet, uh, seller master at Maison Mom. Uh, Lionel Suchet is the director general of Akines. Uh, Sebastian Bard is director general of exploration and uh, human space flight at Akines. Yeah, we need a seat for this guy. Yeah. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's, uh, no problem. Okay. Weakness, uh. This is, uh, yeah. We, you know, every conference I've ever been to, we have the smartest people in the world on stage, and the slides never work, and there's never enough chairs. It's just astonishing to me. Okay, here we go. Uh, and we have also with us uh, Michael Lopez Allegra, uh, the director of development at Axiom Space. Uh, this is a man with a resume too long to list, uh, but I'll list a few things because I like I followed his career. Um, I think three space shuttle missions, a flight to ISS, ten spacewalks, including the longest uh, NASA astronaut walk, uh, and recently the SpaceX Axiom One crew, which was just amazing. And finally, we have Octave de Gaulle, uh, the co-founder of Spade, an agency specializing in design for for space. There he is. Okay, great. And my name is Sam Burbank. I am here because of uh, you know, a happy accident. I started uh, producing a film um, uh, based on a book written by a man called Chris Carberry uh, called Alcohol in Space. And he had found out about this group um, doing this experiment for Champagne in Space. The timing of this could not have been better. I fell in with Octave and his group and got to know these guys a bit and uh, proceeded to have a story unfold before me, uh, which is just something a little bit magical. Um, so we'll start this morning uh, talking about space and technology, of course, but particularly culture in space. How can we take, when we leave Earth for months or years or even a shorter trip, how do we take a piece of our culture with us? Um, so with this, for with this, we turn to Maison Mom. Uh, they launched the Mom Cordon, uh, Cordon Rouge Stellar project six years ago, supported by different experts and partners, some of which are here today, sharing a singular vision. Uh, champagne is one of the most beautiful expressions of uh, conviviality and, and humanity um, in a physical form. And um, we feel like this is more important uh, than ever before. So. Um, uh, I will turn this over uh, at this point, if we're ready with the slideshow, to a short film showing some of the images of this amazing project, and at that point we'll get started with our talk. Fidèle à l'esprit d'avant-garde. Okay, bear with us here. This is worth waiting for. Fidèle à l'esprit d'avant-garde qui anime la Maison Moum depuis près de 200 ans, nous poursuivons depuis 2017 un projet aussi ambitieux que technologique. Moum Cordon Rouge Stellar. Le projet Cordon Rouge Stellar, c'est vraiment la rencontre entre le design l'espace et le champagne. L'histoire de l'exploration spatiale est très récente. Maintenant, les hommes et les femmes qui vont partir dans l'espace, ce sera dans la longue durée, parfois sur de très longues distances. Donc on aura besoin d'apporter dans leur environnement de vie des moyens de se rappeler qui ils sont. Et le défi de ce projet, c'était d'emmener dans l'espace le vin dans son intégrité et en même temps tout le rituel culturel qui va avec. Un petit peu de notre terre, de ce qui fait de nous des humains en fait. Il était très important pour moi de respecter la tradition et le savoir-faire de la Maison Moon, synonyme d'excellence, 
de célébration et de convivialité depuis 1827. C'est vraiment une étape du projet qui s'achève, mais l'aventure, elle commence à peine. C'est le champagne qui lie les hommes à la terre, à leur découverte et à l'avenir. Great, wonderful. Uh, I would like now to turn this, this uh, beginning of this round table over, over, over to uh, César Giron. Uh, and I will start with the question, César, how did a house like Mom fall into such a unique project as this? Well, um, we used to say that uh, when you want to know where you're heading to, you need to know where you're coming from. And we are, in five years, we're going to celebrate the beginning of the third century of existence of Maison Moum. And we look back into what has been done. And we found this picture. What is it? It's Commandant Charcot, who hired a boat, named Le Français, in 1904. And when everybody was going Arctic, he decided to go Antarctic with a simple mission to understand whether Antarctic was an island on an archipelago. And if it had remained just a scientific expedition, would have never been, talk been talking about this picture. What makes a difference in this picture is you see two persons here. You know, rattan seats, nice wooden table, two coupes of champagne, a box of biscuit, tree squid, was very fashionable at that time, and a bottle of moom. You even see uh, one of the crew member with a, like a floral, floral hat, the pipe for the other, and Commandant Charcot is the man just above them, uh, which is slightly on the side on the picture. What makes a difference in this picture is this element of conviviality. Therefore, we believe that at the moment where we wanted to prepare something for or the next generation will be in charge of MUM, we wanted to leave with them a project that we'll be uh, proud of. And therefore, in 2017, we said, well, if the next border, next frontier was Antarctic, now the next frontier is space. And here's the way the project started. And we wanted to bring culture to the space because as uh, somebody said, if, if you want to bring humanity to the space, you cannot just bring human. What makes a difference between people and animals is the cultural part of it. So in this context, Champagne acts almost like a, a, an ambassador from Earth, an ambassador of culture for humanity. Talk about that. When we've seen the COVID pandemic, people stay at home. We meet each other through Teams, Zoom, which was very fancy at the beginning. We all ate it at the end. Uh, and what was very funny is that when the real life started to reopen, we just didn't have enough champagne to provide aid all the world. Because everybody wants to, to cheer with a, a long time to see uh, uh, people. And therefore, the first thing we're doing is we're opening a bottle of champagne just to, to have a good moment. And, uh, and just reconnect with people. So uh, I think champagne is very appropriate for that. And Moom, in his culture, was very appropriate to go to that project. But what's most amazing, and, and when you look at this picture, uh, you will look at the bottle. That was one of the first uh, uh, elements of the project, but Octa will, will discuss this later. What's very important is the two glasses, which means we are here to celebrate. We are here to, re to celebrate responsibly and with conviviality uh, in the space. And we believe that when people will be a long time in space, they will, have, they will need to reconnect at one moment with where they're coming from. And that's why uh, it was something to design the bottle on, on Octave and Laurent have done an incredible job. Uh, but I don't think we would have been able, we would have been able to go that far if we don't have made an incredible encounter with uh, Lionel, Lionel, which was really uh, connected with us, he shared the values that we need to bring more than just human to the space, that we need to bring the culture, 
and then he gave us an incredible boost to the project. And I would like to really to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Champagne. Thank you for humanity. <laughs> and thank you really from the heart. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Cesar. So this is, we talked about this a little bit backstage, that there are, there are the requirements of space flight, the particular requirements, for example, on the ISS of um, what is allowed on board and what is not. And there are very particular requirements of what can be called champagne and what champagne uh, must look and be to be actually called champagne. These are not uh, natural friendships. Uh, the, this, is a, this is kind of trying to fit a, a round peg into a square hole to some extent. So with that in mind, I will now introduce uh, Leonel Suchet, the Director, uh, Director General of, uh, of Kinesh. Um, your job in this case is to help create a connection between this dream of champagne and space and, the, and the, the parameters of what actually can fly to space. Yes, and uh, Sebastian Bard, who come after me, will explain everything, what we, how we help uh, Octave and Moom to, to, to build that. I, I, I just wanted to, to explain to you why a uh, 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 so serious uh, space agency as CNES uh, help Moom uh, in this uh, project. It is important for us. Um, you know, I'm also the, the chair of the organization of this Congress. The motto of this Congress is space for all. And uh, we have to, 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 to make these links. Uh, space is no more, is no more uh, something very difficult, expensive, and limited to very small communities. It's open to all the world. And to have links between kne uh, f uh, space and culture, space and art, is very important for the future and for humanity. And we are sure of that. It's not only that. We have begun in the uh, 90s. Uh, we, 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 uh, I'm a general director of CNES, but I, 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 I worked for 15 years of the beginning of my career on space, space managed, managed space flight, so I, I know that domain very well. And we be, began in the 90s to work on what we called special event meals, not, not champagne, not wine, but meals, and gastronomy, French gastronomy, to fly French gastronomy. It was at this time a challenge to know if it was possible to send high gastronomy, French gastronomy to space. Then we succeeded it, and we very quickly understood. At that time, it was on the Mir station with the cooperation we had with Russia. Uh, we, 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 we understood very quickly that it's not only important to send a piece of French culture up there, but it was also very important for the crew, especially for long duration flight, to share meals to sh as we do in, in, on Earth, to share good moments uh, around a good, a good repas, as we said in French. And it was very important for psychological aspect and so for operational aspects. So we developed that. We went in, uh, when we went from Mir to the ISS, we, we, we have worked with uh, our uh, American colleagues, and we developed that with the French uh, three stars, Alain Ducasse, who now, and now we have a, a, a tens of recipes with well qualified for space and each crew can choose on that some recipes to make good uh, repas on ISS. So it has been always very important for us and when Moom and Octave and, and Cesar came and asked, could Agnes help us to, 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 to do this, uh, this project? I said obviously yes, it's important for the future, for sure we want send uh, a, a wine or champagne for uh, operational institutional flight, but as tourism, and wh why not one day, maybe, I don't know, now no, but for while tourism is developing, we, we have to put this, this piece of French culture uh, on space. It's important for the future, as we do for meals, as we do for gastronomy, we will do for champagne. And so we help a lot, there is a lot of technology Sebastian Octave will explain to you to that in this bottle, a lot of technology, not only champagne, but technology also. And so we help to, to have all together to make it possible for you to send this piece of French culture into space. You know, in the ISS, in space, every country wants to fly what he has better from, from him. We, we have a lot of competencies in Europe and in France to build spacecraft, to, to, to help technical pieces in space, but we have also this, it is our best of our culture, and we wanted to have it up there also. 
Very good. Well, we keep talking about this, uh, but in fact, we, I would like Cesar, can you, can you uh, grab this bottle and talk about what we're talking about here uh, and formally bring us into this discussion? Um, if you think that space specification are complicated, <clears throat> I invite you to read the Champagne specification. 200 years of accumulated text. And therefore, inside there's a real bottle of champagne. And there's just no way that we can call champagne a product that will not respect the champagne specification. So the challenge was to make something which was compatible with the space specification and the champagne specification. But I guess maybe uh, Octavio Sebastian will be much more qualified than us to describe the technology behind. Very good. Let's pass the mic over to Octave de Gaulle. This is, um, so we, we will see a little bit later that this, this did not come out of one try. Octave has been working on this for a long time with many iterations and what he's, well, what he was holding in his hand, grab that bottle, please. What he's holding in his hands is the product of many years of struggle, uh, lots of glorious failures, and, and finally um, a design that now functions as designed, as, as dreamed. Uh, so uh, I introduced you before Octave, so I won't introduce you again. Tell us more about this project. Yeah, so this project uh, started um, five years ago already um, with the intent of not only bringing champagne into space um, as, a matter, as a material, you know, something you could bring in a, in a, in a sack or in a, or in a standard uh, tube, but with the intent to bring a ritual, to bring uh, what makes champagne a conviviality ambassador. And um, I'm saying this because um, what we have recreated in 2018 was already um, exactly what you can experience with this bottle. So it means we had a ritual of opening, of serving, of sharing, and all these were very important because you're not going to distribute um, um, individual uh, pockets of champagne. You, we wanted to share it and we wanted to that the nose and the, and the aromas that flow through the nose um, are, are well thought in the, in the experience we're going to design. And this was achieved in 2018. We were very happy to present this. And then we came back from this flight thinking, oh, we have, a f we have a first bottle and now we have to qualify it for space and we have to make it compliant with the I AOC regulations. And um, as, you, as you said it before, um, so most of you know how complicated it is to qualify material for space. It is not an easy um, game to, to make it compliant to champagne regulation neither. And what's happening with this object is that it it meets both compliance and it is making the link between um, the technology and the safety that is required for a space flight and the excellence and, um, and the purity that is needed to preserve and to, tra and to travel champagne to space and to serve it in the, in the best condition. So we, have, we had the highest um, standards to work with inside and out and my job as a designer was not only to meet both these requirements in one object, but also to preserve everything that makes drinking champagne, um, that makes drinking champagne something more than just drinking the, the liquid itself, but that makes it a convivial experience that would have great value uh, in long journeys for astronauts, in low Earth orbits activity, and in uh, the further development of space with uh, um, uh, less professional astronauts as we as we have seen recently and as we will continue to see um, so an intuitive and an ergonomic object that allow us to recreate a celebration you told me once that um, we were talking about payloads and weight restrictions and so on and I I had been thinking about this bottle as as being a bit of a heavy cumbersome thing to take say to an orbit around Mars or a or a many months trip to the moon. And Octave looked at me and he said, he said, ounce for ounce, gram for gram, it's the lightest weight contraption you could bring that holds so much earth inside of it. And I was really moved by that, that what we're talking about here is not necessarily a drink. You know, let's, let's exactly. watch. Exactly. I want to emphasize on this that the, the philosophy of the project is to bring much more than a drink. And in fact, we are not bringing, we are bringing half a bottle of champagne, which is a tiny amount of, of this drink. And we have seen in zero gravity testing, and we will continue to see, I'm sure, extraordinary uh, experiences that are generated with this. And 
This is because we are bringing much more than half a bottle of liquid. We are bringing half a bottle of a, a great wine, but we are also bringing a complete 360 experience that is something that is uh, that we have seen people enjoying in our in all our zero gravity flight and that's true that if you consider gram per gram the effort the metal the glass and the materials that are inside we are bringing a part of earth soil 200 years of tradition we are bringing um, human culture and transmission of that culture of the of the vineyards we are bringing a bit of the of of the weather, of the wind, of the, of the work of, of Laurent. We are bringing a lot of what makes Earth, Earth into approximately two kilos of material. Beautiful. At this point, I'd like to turn the, the microphone over to Sebastian Bard. Um, I'll give a quick inter introduction. Um, Sebastian is the Deputy Director of Exploration and Human Space Flight at CNES. And he's going to explain to us how this is a um, especially unusual project for Kness. Yes, um, before, for us, before I send conviviality in the uh, space station, I fully agree with that, and I will explain why it is important for us, uh, such a project. The, our problem is to send an hardware in, uh, in the space station. So it's, it's always difficult. Uh, everybody knows uh, that is it's um, very difficult to send hardware uh, in space, especially to uh, withstand uh, vibrations, for example, during launch. But when you want to send something in the space station, it's much more difficult because you have to respect safety uh, requirements because we don't play with the life or health of the astronauts. And uh, this is a real introduce more difficulties. For example, if uh, you want to prevent leak, because they are liquid here, yeah. uh, we are obliged not to, to have only one uh, barrier, con container barrier, but sometimes we have to, 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 do, to, do, do, to have two, sorry, and sometimes three. So it's, it's much more difficult in terms of hardware. Um, to, 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 to give you an idea, the, the philosophy, uh, I could say in French, is uh, ceinture and bretelle. It's been belt and straps. Uh, so, uh, for example, when you we want to imagine the, the the, the case which can uh, occur problems. Uh, we, we take into account not only one event, but uh, uh, to, to, to think about two or three events at the same time, even if uh, the probability is very low. But well, this is a way of uh, thinking to, to, um, to send hardware in the space station. So, but in fact, it's our job. So uh, people from uh, CADMOS, engineers from CADMOS, are used to do that. The, the real challenge in this project for us in fact, was to cope all these requirements, safety and technical requirements, with the fact that at the end we want a hardware which look like a real uh, bottles, uh, with a neck, for example, with cork, with uh, cope with IOC requirements. Uh, perhaps Ron will uh, give more uh, more information about that, and with something which is uh, which, uh, to to have the same test of champagne is not a uh, simple liquid. So it, it was really the, the challenge, and I have to, to recognize that uh, uh, Octave and uh, engineers from Cadmos have realized a very good job, and they have found a very innovative solution to, to, to cope with all these requirements. And for us, it's a, in fact a user case, and, uh, to, to that, and, and we will uh, reuse all these uh, innovative solutions for future projects. Yeah. We talked a little bit earlier about this term, which I absolutely adore, the secondary needs of exploration, the psychology of exploration. Talk about that. I, and I'm, I'm just so glad that someone is thinking about these things because uh, the yeah. astronauts are not robots, as Michael will explain yes, to right. us in a few minutes. Uh, above the ISS, our next challenge for us agencies is to prepare the long duration mission to, to, to Mars, and uh, when astronauts will be uh, so far from Earth, then they can see no more the Earth like a, like a planet, but like just like uh, another star in, in the sky. Uh, they cannot communicate it uh, to, the, to the Earth, as you can do uh, today in the ISS, or so to wait for 20 minutes to send messages to, to, to the Earth, and wait uh, after 20 minutes more to receive the answer. So. The, the, um, the feeling of uh, solitude will be great, and we have to take care really to the, um, the, the psychological uh, uh, of the astronaut. 
it is a question of success for the mission. And uh, such an event, like, uh, for example, as uh, Lionel explained in the ISS or around the, uh, the mill or around, uh, uh, around um, uh, something like uh, uh, the champagne, will be very important to, to be sure that uh, we have uh, uh, the, the crew in uh, good shape um, and uh, efficient for this opposition. We're going to find out if, if this is a true statement next from our next speaker, Michael, Michael Lopez Alegra. Uh, he is the di uh, Director of Development at Axiom Space. Um, talk about this relationship you guys have started now with Maison Mom. And, and once you're finished with your introduction, let's talk a little bit about what we, what we just heard as well, about the needs of astronauts. Yeah. First of all, I'm very excited to be part of this. Um, I have... Uh, you know, just to go back in terms of evolution, we saw the picture uh, of the folks drinking the, the Coupe de Champagne in Antarctica. And I was at a conference a few years ago. It was about risk. And there were a lot of different um, groups of people that had had, you know, some sort of calamity while they were undergoing some great adventure. And I remember one, um, a couple of British sailors who sailed this uh, tiny sailboat around the world pretty much, and they had some real challenges. And somebody in the audience asked, what is it that, um, like, how did you hold it together? Or what was it that, um, you know, kept you going? And they said it was that at 5 p.m., weather permitting, every day they had a gin and tonic on the deck. And that really struck me because, um, you know, Obviously, human space exploration is a great adventure. Um, I love the phrase that you can't bring humanity to space by only bringing humans. You have to bring their cultures and their traditions. And for them, a gin and tonic on the deck, it wasn't to become seasick from alcohol. It was, it was a tradition. It was, a, it was a, uh, something that was a part of their culture. And to start, we've, we're starting to do this in space. Um, I remember on my, my fourth mission, which was seven months on the ISS, we had a couple of the meals from Alain Ducasse that uh, Lionel mentioned. Um, it wasn't exactly the same because it was served in a can, right? Probably not what you're expecting. And I think that's why it's so important that we not bring champagne in a pouch, which in addition to violating all the AOC regulations, <laughs> would not be terribly uh, enjoyable. So I'm very excited about this opportunity of bringing a culture tradition, something that so um, marks a, a celebration. Um, we need to not just work in space, but truly live in space. And we're in the part of evolution of our, of our spacefaring history, where it isn't anymore just about doing research. Uh, it's now opening it up democratizing, if you will, the experience. And part of that experience is having things that um, remind you of home. So whether it's a glass of wine with dinner or smelling, you know, the smell of freshly cut grass, these things that are really missing from that experience, slowly bringing them in is going to make that human experience in space so much better. And I think this is a lovely step in that direction. Great. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship now with, with Mum? And when I, I see what you're trying to do, uh, building these modules, these are very big, complicated things. Here is a very small, complicated things. Talk about the way you, you, you work together, the way they look at your developments, you're looking at theirs. And there must be some kind of um, particularly interesting cultural thing happening with this mostly American group working with this mostly French group? Sure, well, again, for so many years, these uh, human space flight has been a domain of, of countries, agencies, and, and not um, private citizens or companies or research institutions. And as a result, the focus of activities has been necessarily narrow. I mean, they've been doing things that, that they think are important in terms of research, but we are interested in opening that aperture up to activities that are anything that's commercial. We want to, let's say, make a movie or shoot a spot for something. And these are things that national agencies probably shouldn't and don't partake in. And so this is just a part of that expanding the experience to bring in something that heretofore has not been part of the, the space experience. And with MUM, we plan to bring uh, champagne to space in its form, 
It'll probably be a build-up approach. We tend to do things slowly, so maybe the first flight it'll go up and then come back down just to make sure everything um, <laughs> together. holds together. Uh, then the second time, and, and I hope I'm on this mission, <laughs> perhaps we'll take it out and, um, and as you saw in the zero-G uh, imagery, uh, be able to use the bottle and, and have a, the first toast of champagne from low Earth orbit in the not too distant future. Would you consider being a part of that? <laughs> I would raise my hand. I am raising my hand. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Maybe uh, we were mentioning before that uh, when we started the project, we had no idea how difficult it was going to be. And uh, Octave and Laurent managed to design the first uh, prototype. And then thanks to the incredible encounter with uh, Kness, we managed to get the bottle qualified for space. But the bottle was still there on the land. <laughs> we had to bring it up. And uh, the third encounter was just an incredible encounter. Uh, so I just would like to say thank you from all the GH Moon uh, team uh, that we have met uh, Axiom Space and that you quickly embark on the project and you are allowing us now to bring, to deliver that champagne experience in the space. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. We, we say merci de retour because we are very proud partners to be with you in this project. I think it's a beautiful expression of, again, bringing tradition and culture to space, not just humans. Great. So we, we've talked a bit about the technical challenges of all of this, and um, there's another technical challenge to this, which is actually creating champagne. Uh, and we're not going to be lost here because we have one of the world's great uh, winemakers sitting to my right here, uh, Laurent, uh, Laurent Frenet. I'm doing my best with all everyone's names here. And I'll turn it over to you at, with, a, with a simple question, and it's never a simple answer. What is champagne? Champ only champagne comes from champagne anyway. So champagne is um, the, the drink of God and God of drinks. <laughs> So this, uh, yeah, this is very particular. This, this uh, action, this uh, project is very, very particular for me because when you're very a young boy, you're speaking about what you are doing to do in, in your life. Uh, very early, I was speaking about my, with my father, say, I want to be winemaker, to be cellar master, and uh, I never expect that uh, one of my life, uh, wine I'm producing, should be drink or testing in space. So really, very, it was very, very great challenging and very amazing project. We had the pleasure last night of tasting um, one of your Earth vintages uh, against your space vintage. Talk about uh, the idea that in space, f flavors take on uh, a new meaning. And Michael, maybe you can jump into this as well um, when he's had, had a thought or two. Okay. okay so. I did the parabolic flight uh, and test in, in zero gravity the, the wine. And um, what is the, the, the condition of testing in, in zero gravity is differe and different elements. Um, first, the sense of smell um, being a key uh, dimension of testing uh, is altered, uh, modifying the overall perception of your wine. And uh, the second thing is uh, the sensory sequence is also different. You know, this, the form, uh, yeah, this, 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 um, this form of form uh, connect with your lips, your, 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 your mouth, and uh, physically speaking, we need to crack the bubbles into your mouth to release the aromatic molecules. It's very, very surprising and exciting. Was that a surprise to you? You, you had no idea that the experience never, would be so different. No, see, I, I drink bubbles. <laughs> so this is very funny. On Earth, it's never happened. And you, you have a sensation of to crack bubbles in your, into your mouth. So this is very strange sensations. So all of this, param uh, with these different parameters, uh, we need to differently select something different. So. Uh, it's why we we select uh, a blend of uh, Moum Cordon Rouge. Um, we've made with grapes from the 2016 harvest. This is uh, like that. I um, I reinforce the the feature of Moum style, and uh, it's, uh, it's it's clear. It's freshness, intensity, and complexity. And so so doing the wine um, the wine we test. Uh, in conditions, uh, matches in conditions in the testing 
under the gravity. Michael, can you weigh in a bit with, excuse me, can you weigh in a bit with the, the different experience of eating and drinking in space and, uh, and your thoughts about that? Yeah, of course. Uh, so interestingly, the first reaction most people who've been to space would have is that it's, there's no difference, right? They were very worried on the very early days of the space program, well, will you be able to swallow? I mean, some very basic physiological things. Turns out it's not as big a problem. But then when you get sort of past the first layer, there are definitely some differences. Most people say that their palate becomes a little uh, less sensitive. Uh, they like spicier things than they normally would. So Tabasco sauce is in great demand on the space station. And I'm excited to see what this is like. And I, I have a question for you, Laurent. Are the bubbles um, in the space vintage the same as the, the size of the bubble? Because it's a function of the pressure, yeah? Yeah, the size is exactly the same. So we only change the aging of the you know, to, to represent the Cordon Rouge style on space, to, we got the same, same uh, flavors and sensation. Uh, we work on two, uh, we focused on two different elements. First is aging bottle, aging on late, you know, in Champagne we can age uh, on yeast, so to, to increase uh, the aromatic flavors, especially to highlight notes on uh, ripe uh, yellow fruits and uh, wine pish. And uh, as well as dry fruit, as a nuts and praline. And the second thing we can do uh, to, to, to guarantee the style of Moum uh, Cord Rouge in space is to, to touch a little bit uh, on the liquor dosage. So we create a special liquor, so with um, a wine aged in barrels to bring out vanilla and, uh, and uh, pastry notes flowers. So like that we increase the, and reinforce the style of Moum to be sure that you can cut on your nose and your palate the real sensation of, uh, of the wine of uh, Corde Rouge. So it's why we did a very special wine for uh, Moum Corde Rouge Stella. And on the zero G flights, were you able to have the aroma um, like you normally when you taste a wine or champagne, you put your nose in there first and you swirl it around a bit. Were you able to sense that or did you have to wait until it was in your mouth? So the nose is quite difficult because it's a, it's a, a glass of foam. <laughs> so and you need to, to, to crush the bubbles to, to release the, the aromats. But uh, what is very, very particular is uh, when, when you put your wine, you crack the bubbles, you, lib you, free, you, you release the, the molecule, and uh, the, the wine cuts full mouth. Not with gravity, normally it's the done palate and on your tongue. La uh, in, in space, in gravity, it's full mouth. So it's very surprising. So, and what you say with the nose is the back nose. So when your wine is in mouth, you can smell by the back nose uh, the aromat. So, I, and I just want to underscore what he said so that what's interesting is um, when you drink any liquid on earth, it passes in a certain path to your throat and it activates certain taste buds. But here, once you get it inside your mouth, uh, it wicks to, wick is the wrong word, it uses surface tension to basically coat your entire inside of your mouth. And so it's a, I assume it's going to be a very intense experience. Yeah, the word from everyone I've spoken with so far who, who have experienced this champagne in space, it sounds like a marketing gimmick, but in fact, it is, a, it is a flavor you cannot get on Earth. And it's a nice selling point, and I would love to try it as well. Uh, guys, we're going to uh, keep things moving along here. Uh, I'm going to pass the, the microphone back to Cesar for a few last thoughts. I th if I'm not mistaken, we may be able to see a sneak trailer of the new film these guys will be in uh, next year. And after that, we'll open up the, the floor for questions. And I'm sure you've got some interesting questions for everybody up here. So Cesar. Thank you, Sam. Um, when you are in charge of a company which is already 200 years old, and you are on the brink of getting on the third century, you always question, why are we here? Why have I been here for so long? I think one of the reasons why uh, GH Moom uh, has been here is because since the beginning, we wanted to celebrate the pursuit of progress. And when we look at it now, and when I see uh, all the energies that have been uh, gathering around this project, I uh, would have never expected to have such an enthusiasm from such big uh, corporation on, on incredible people. 
So uh, I believe that this project goes above just getting a moon champagne into space. I think this project is really about bringing human, humanity into the space. So again, uh, thank to all of you. You have an uh, incredible, Octave and Laurent, you have done an incredible job uh, to, um, to bring this together, the two specific book. Agnes, thank you for getting this bottle qualified space. And Michael, thank you for bringing this bottle to space. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chris is a pioneer. He brings the humanity into this human story. Alcohol has been a part of human culture from the very beginning. Culture is what makes a society. We have the solution. We made only two prototypes, very much alike, you know, and the two prototypes failed he completely. Let's send yeast to space and brew with it. It worked, but what didn't work is us not finding the rocket for 28 days. So that's how it all came about, Sam. It was bonkers mad. It was such a short period of time I had to work with. I kind of love Elon Musk. Musk is a nice example of a culture that wants a hero or a villain more than they want an ordinary human being doing good work. This is actually getting serious. A bottle that gives you the ability to share the champagne, to serve it in a very playful way. Today, we have an experience that is fabulous, that is not absolutely reproductible on Earth. But the most incredible for me was to degust it. You know, at gravity zero, you have no more taste. So you have the wine, 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 que je n'avais jamais connu, c'est le croquant de bulles, parce qu'il a fallu percer les bulles, claquer les bulles, puisque physiquement, il a fallu les, euh, bah, exploser les bulles pour avoir le liquide. Et c'était une expérience vraiment unique. Hein. Jules Verne a actually hypothesized bringing grape vines with them and growing vines on the moon, thinking that the art and sunshine on the moon would create really wonderful wine vintages. This was the first time they were contemplating agriculture on another planet. This dream of Jules Verne would come true, at least having wine on the moon 104 years later, in 1969, when Apollo 11 landed and Buzz Aldrin actually consumed wine on the surface of the moon. This isn't a bonus, this isn't a nice to have. This is what it means to be human. If we can allow astronauts to be not only machines, but to be people, not only surviving entities, but people, to create, even for, for a few minutes, a society of humans outside of Earth, then this is precious. Great, so let's, let's open, the, I don't know if we have a microphone we can pass around. Oh great, yes we do, so let's, Jeez, I can't see the audience well these classes. Uh, put your hand up if you have a question for these fine folks up here, and if not, we'll, we see any hands over here? Any questions for the panel? Yeah, question over here to the left, please. Hi, hello everyone, and thank you for the explanation of the movie. Uh, how much will this cost for us, Earthlings? <laughs> Is it for sale or we have first to buy a ticket to space? Thank you. <laughs> the only way to drink the water is to go into space, so I guess it's a full ticket. <laughs> and somehow the experience, you can leave it very easily on Earth buying a regular bottle of champagne. This was, uh, this was just trying to reproduce that in space. And the, the whole effort is to actually make what is easy here possible there. So it's not that uh, expensive. So it's also for me an opportunity to say thank you to Jean-François Clairvoy with the zero-g flight, um, because I think we have been uh, 
going up and down just to try uh, 20 seconds each time. <laughs> and he's now in the plane flying, that's why he's not here with us today. So just a big thanks to him as well. All right, I'm hoping LA doesn't get too mad at me. Uh, so a question for you guys. Uh, 30 seconds of weightlessness at a time in zero G is great, but you have the gravity vector that comes back into play in between every parabola. Fluids behave in crazy ways in microgravity where you're constantly there. Are you worried about how it's going to change the champagne as it sits there for days, weeks, years? Or, okay, not years, but um, it is very different than having gravity come back into play every 30 seconds. I've, have you considered that? Hi, LA. <laughs> it's Michelle. <laughs> I can, uh, I can answer from uh, Moom's point of view because uh, working on this project, uh, we've obviously worked with great technologists that are here, but we also work with the University of Reims um, and uh, we modelized completely the dilution of CO2 and the evolution of wine in microgravity. And we believe that, um, uh, of course, there's a part that we cannot plan in how it will evolve in terms of uh, organoleptics, and this is probably something we can uh, test with uh, the partnership with Axiom, but we have modelized the physics of it uh, to be sure that we meet the constraints that could uh, emerge from uh, from this new set of rules. So, and particularly the dilution of CO2, and we are not so far, and, and where the difference is not so big with uh, uh, with uh, with here on Earth. Um, I'd say it's exactly like here on Earth. It's the conservation, and and um, mainly the big factors are temperature. And, um, and exposure to light. We have another hand in the back, yep. Hi, uh, I know it's quite a long process and this might be a while out, but have you started thinking about potential uh, partial gravity mechanisms for perhaps the lunar surface or the Martian surface? That's a great question. Did you hear the question? The question was, these are tests for zero G, but what about one sixth G on the moon or one third G on Mars? Oh, I was asked a question yesterday, that whenever we can go to the moon, um, whether we'll open a pop champagne bar there. So I said that definitely, and we'll have to work a bit on the music as well. Now, we have been trying as well on, um, on uh, moon's gravity and Mars gravity, but maybe you want to say more. Uh, yes. One of the one of the key aspects of this project is to replace how we're going to serve, and this is to pour. Let's put it like that. So, what kind of gravity surrogate we can get so that we get the action of sharing, serving, and what is very simple with tilting a bottle here on Earth becomes a nightmare in zero gravity, especially with pressurized containers. And um, we believe that on the Moon, to some extent, and maybe it will require some redesign of the glasses, or on Mars, the, um, the partial gravity that you have will make things much easier. So this is really, I'd say, a traveler's uh, bottle that is dedicated to microgravity. But of course, we've been thinking about this. Okay, we have any, any more questions back there? How are we doing on time here? I want to. We're, we're maybe there's, there's a question that nobody has asked. Is that, what are the next steps? Yeah, so yeah very Michael, good. You want to say something about that? So we plan to fly um, a, a bottle like this uh, on one of our upcoming missions, uh, probably sometime next year. And uh, as I said, we haven't determined how far we'll go on that first. Maybe we want to fly an entire flight and bring it back in, in peace, intact. Uh, maybe the crew will get too anxious and they'll open it uh, on the very first flight. But I think it's going to be a, an amazing experience for whoever the lucky uh, crew is to, to do that. And I guess my question is, speaking of tradition, something that I learned uh, a long time ago in the U.S. Navy is to saber a bottle of champagne. So have you thought about a zero-G saber and how we're going to catch the cork? <laughs> the question is about using a sword, a saber, to open the bottle in uh, zero-G. We'll keep this is the axiom mentality. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep a bit traditional at the beginning, but as soon as we can, we'll do it. <laughs> it was rhetorical. We, we're, well, we need to, we need to think, think everything through here. Uh, one, uh, any more questions out of the field? Yeah, we have one more in the middle there. Uh, yeah, so I saw the clip from Ardbeg, who have used space-flown yeast. Are you guys planning to use space-flown yeast for any of your brews? The question was about about uh, using yeast. You're 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 not using. Yeah, this is not a. 
no, 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 this is not, not a part of the process. But although others are doing so, yeast is a fun thing to send to orbit because you can bring it back and make more yeast, and it's always that yeast that went to orbit. Uh, it's kind of the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, do we have any more questions in, the, in there? Because um, I have a question for Octave. Yeah, we have one back here. As a uh, reminder, when you have a, to know to be able to be called champagne, you have to do a first fermentation in tank and a second fermentation in the bottle. And it's only when you have the second fermentation in the bottle that the wine can be called champagne. So that anything which is called champagne has to respect this process right from the production. So it's not something that we can add or do somewhere else. It has to be done in champagne area. Very good. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll ask one more question. And it just has to do, um, Caesar and, and Michael and all of you, about We've, we've moved so quickly into this new space, this new, this new idea of testing things in private space, which for all, all of us who've been pushing space, for, it was a dream we weren't sure we would ever see. And now it's kind of washed over us. Almost, and the question is, wh what does it feel like to be th for things to be moving so quickly now? I guess it's a question for you, Michael, and then also for others. What are, Look, it's, it is definitely... Um, exponential what's been going on in the last handful of years. Uh, I think arguably this all started in 2004, the first flight of um, a scaled composites airplane, which is sort of the prototype of the Virgin Galactic. And that was sort of the first idea of what I'll call tourism in space. That certainly has taken a long time to develop, but as you see now, Blue Origin is doing it quite regularly. I think we'll see flights from Virgin Galactic next year. What has enabled it in the orbital sense, I think, is just the reusability and the economics. So SpaceX has really um, revolutionized the launch market with their um, reusability and economies of scale. And, and so that's what um, space was so expensive for so long because materials were exotic, techniques were exotic. It was almost they were handcrafting rockets. And now with the aid of computer-aided design and manufacturing, you know, they're, they're producing them incredibly uh, reliably uh, with very little margin of their, from the original design. And so that has increased safety. It's increased the, the pace at which things happen. And so, you know, now it's sort of like you described it as a wave. If you've ever body surfed, you need to start swimming at the right time. And once you're on that wave, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I think we're near the end uh, of our time. Can somebody give me a heads up on time? Yeah, we, yeah, I'm getting the, 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 the universal cut it off. I want to thank all of you guys for, for joining us today and th allowing me to moderate this panel. Um, we'll, we'll all be around if you have questions afterwards. And thanks again, all of you, for coming.